an Airwick scented oil vaporizer. Now, the reason I bought this was because, well, partly because it's a new style, but more interestingly, most of the uh, units, let's open this up. Yep. Most of the units in the past have not been easy to open. They've been heat state closed. They've been sort of plastic riveted closed. And it's interesting that this one bucks that trend in that it's got these uh, clear tags that suggest that it could be opened. So um, to give you an idea of how these things work and what I'm expecting inside, then we'll open it and find if it is or, or what arrangement it uses. These things are designed to use with a little bottle of scented oil. And this bottle of scented oil has a cap and then it's got a wick that sticks out. And the wick goes right down into the liquid, the scented oil, scented oil, which is a chemical concoction of various uh, high aroma chemicals in a carrier liquid. And that gets wicked up and then in the simplest uh, units, the cheapest units, there's just one resistor at the side that acts as a heating element and it just creates an upflow of air, it heats the wick and it also creates a flow of air through the unit to actually carry the smell out. And the main difference in quality of these units is not just the sort of vaporizer itself, it's the actual liquids that are used because if you get an expensive one like this sort of air wicky type thing, then the liquid will be quite a complex combination of aromas with ridiculous names that bear no relation to what the actual smell is, like like moonlight sheets made of silk and purple, purple flower, and it's just weird names that you think, well, if you sniff that and then try to guess what it was, you wouldn't actually guess it was silk purple sheets or anything like that, and they, they come up with these weird names. <laughs> And when you get a lot of them next to each other and sniff them, they more or less sniff all this. They, they smell as though they just use a very small number of chemicals. But uh, <clears throat> the cheap ones, uh, the chemicals they use, they tend to use, say for instance, they use lavendiol or something like that, which is a concentrated lavender aroma chemical. And when you smell the single aroma ones, the, the, they get really annoying very quickly because it's just one pungent smell and it's the same between all the units and the cheap units and like they're disgusting. So these ones at least have the advantage of having a fairly complex smell. Although whether uh, evaporating chemicals into your house is a good thing is debatable. The more complex units though, apart from that sort of single resistor arrangement, the more complex ones sometimes have a little donut that surrounds the heating element to heat it on all sides. And the inside of that, if you pop them open, is sometimes a resistor on, uh, on either side, or maybe more uh, resistors, actually shunted across to create a little circular heating element. But usually they are still always just based on resistors, potted in or, or loose, because that is the cheapest way to make a heating element. So that said, I think it's time to open this. So let's um, start by trying to get the base off. This is where I'm going to stab myself. It's so easy to do. I'm not sure how many... This could be one of those annoying ones that as you uh, unclip one side, the other side clips back in again. So this is looking promising so far. I think. No, I think I'm going to have to uh, do those little bits as well. Ugh. I have no intention of really putting this back together and using it again. So let's uh, be brutal about it. Right, so what do we have? We have the, oh, we've got quite a complex little heating block. Now, another thing about these units is that the, oh. Well, that's interesting. It winds the block up and down. That's quite neat. So I should be able to theoretically remove this completely. But yes, I can. So uh, this one has a coarse screw thread that is winding this sort of heated core up and down. So I'm guessing that the more, uh, it's just varying the amount of the end of the wick that is covered by the heated core. Let's go in further, let's see if we can open this. Another thing worth noting is that uh, the difference between different countries is simply that there's a, a standard frame here and they'll have different connectors. So in countries that just have the bi-pin connector, you'll, uh, they'll simply, that's all that'll be. It'll be the same base unit with the same set of heating element depending on the voltage, because uh, all they do for the, if it's fixed resistors, by using lower value resistors, they can give the equivalent wattage and lower voltage. But it's just a, a different insert that goes in here. So let's uh, see if we can open this without stabbing myself. That not stabbing myself, but might be the most complex, but I do see that there's a sort of 
what looks like a silicony goo in here, so I'm not holding my breath on being able to open this easily. I might hold my breath if I was actually using the aroma. This is where I don't want to actually make a hole through this table because it is student accommodation I'm currently in at the moment, and that would be terribly unsociable. This, is, this doesn't look like it's going to open easily. Mmm, that is filled, I think. I may have to pause while I open this, but, but in the meantime, I shall try and open it as it is. This is where it's so much more convenient. Oh, nope, nope, nope. We're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Oh. It's filled with a ceramic -y cement. That's a wee bit annoying. Can I get in any further? I'm pinging bits all over the place. The bed is going to be full of bits of ceramic and plastic now. For those who don't know right at the moment, I'm working on a job in Edinburgh, so I've got student accommodation uh, provided by the employer, uh, which is just basically crew accommodation. All the crews stay at the, the one block, a uh, small block of flats. Uh, the bed is a single bed, and for MD who's seen me in the flesh, so to speak, I'm quite a big person, so it, it's not a good fit. Oh, right, OK. What I'm seeing here, I'm seeing resistors. So they've got resistors. And it is exactly as I drew earlier on. Well, this is making a mess, but that's OK. I'm very good at making messes. So it's unusual that they've potted it in further into this sort of heat transfer cement. That's quite interesting. Presumably to give a more even heating. So the colour codes have not survived intact on these. It looks like it could be 1.5k. Let's say I bring the meter in. I could have actually measured that before I started taking them to bits by just measuring across the pins of the plug. So the resistance, the combined resistance is 30k. It's, it's 15k actually. It's 15k there. So that's going to be, I can see the brown and green breadth, but that, that'll be brown, green, and the band that's missing is orange. Why has the orange band uh, come off? Has it ever had an orange band? That's interesting. So, uh, yeah, that's quite a, an interesting construction. It's designed to heat this very evenly with that sort of cementish filling. So what about this? Can I get this off? This, uh, look, it's kind of trapped. Can I use brute force and ignorance? I usually can. That's another thing I'm very good at, brute force and ignorance. Let's see if we can uh, prize this out without injuring myself. I'll try and uh, stay further up the screen here. Is this going to come out? Oh, I've just jammed the screwdriver bit in there. Um, let's uh, just prise recklessly until I, until I impale myself. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not being very subtle here, am I? I wonder if this is designed to slot in a particular direction before it pushes in. It is quite a tight fit. It really it looks like it's been pushed down from the top. Ugh. And there is a sort of plastic liner to the grey uh, bit here comes all the way down to the bottom, so that is I wonder if that's what's that. Ugh. Okay. So yes, it's got a sort of white plastic insert with the coarse thread that winds this up and down inside it. Um, and that's fundamentally it. There's, it's got very limited movement. It only rotates about 180 degrees, and that's just uh, winds that round. So is there anything else that's uh, worth noting here? I don't think there's anything else worth noting here, having thoroughly destroyed it. There was a little... Uh, I noticed that uh, there was... a little indent that this seemed to line up with. I'm not spotting it. Oh, there it is. That uh, was underneath that, so it sort of indicated the sort of aroma strength position by which one you turned it to. But really, all it's doing is raising and lowering this and possibly veering the airflow through the unit as well. So yes, that's completely destroyed now. That's another success for us.